Hello, welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining me. Now, sometimes it, it, one can jump to a conclusion and feel like a complete and utter fool, and I don't know if that's what I'm doing now, but a number of people have urgently got in touch with me and said, Richard, this has just passed and you really should have a look at it. Now, I'm going to say absolutely that I haven't had a chance to uh, assimilate this, but because it has been uh, passed, I believe, as an act, it must have had the royal assent. Um, it is now something new. Let me put uh, a picture on the screen. The Genetic Technology Precision Breeding Act 2023. Um, I don't really know what that means, but it's like somewhat worrying. Um, have we had a debate on this? Is this something that we've been talked about? Have we been asked if this is what we want? Have there been public consultations? Oh, wait a minute. We don't do that in this country anymore. We just go ahead and do these things anyway, and we just let the poor people not know about it. Um, so I just thought we'd have a very quick look at this because it's been it's been published. I have really no idea. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I was minding my own business. This came in, checking the emails, doing all the stuff, and then I thought, oh, well, maybe I should just pass this on. Now, if this is nothing to worry about and I'm looking a complete fool and, and people get in touch with me and say, Richard, no, no, it's nothing to worry about, that's fine. I don't mind if uh, I, I make an error and it's corrected. If, on the other hand, that something like this, which, uh, to be honest with you, scares the living daylights out of me just on the idea of it. Um, if, on the other hand, that this is a scary and relevant thing, then obviously it's worth just sharing it. So this is a paper that's obviously on the government website. Here we go. Genetic technology, precision breeding. Now, of course, it's a strange term and it's a little bit frightening because it says genetic. Now, does that... Have we not done a little bit of precision breeding in the past? Have we not? Is that not what we do when we take um, a, a, a lamb and another lamb or whatever it is and, and we, we sort of try to push them so that we get the best breed? But the genetic bit is the bit that's the scary bit, isn't it? With, because that's to do with genomes, where you're actually extracting something out. You know, it's not just what you do with a couple of animals and let them get on with it. You're actually meddling with the, the internal workings. Um, so let's just have a look, because as I say, I am no scientist. I can't say whether this is good, bad, indifferent. You are far cleverer than I am. But let's just have a very quick look, because a lot of people may not have heard of this or may at the end of the day think, I don't know what this is. Is this like the GM crops that we were had, which uh, caused a lot of stink? Now, there was a little thing I noticed. Where is it? It's, it's not on here. I did see it somewhere at some point. I wanted to point this out because this was quite interesting. Here, Charles III. I don't know quite what that means. Presumably it's had the royal assent. So... Uh, yeah. So anyway, we get the index here, which tells us what we've got. Precision bred organism. Uh, that's what it seems to be we're going to get to, the definitions and the meaning of plant and animal. Just so you, you know what that is, in case you didn't. Um, and then in part two of this document, we've got the restrictions on release of precision bred organism in England. It'd be interesting to know what that is. And the, re the release of precision bred organisms, notification requirements and all of all of this sort of stuff. So it's all a little, I mean, it just sounds very scary, but of course, presumably the people who have negotiated this and argued this and researched this have, you know, they must surely have got our benevolent interest in heart. They must be thinking we, we don't want to harm anybody. There's no way whatsoever in any shape or form that this could possibly go wrong. Not like maybe, you know, something else the government has done with um, needles and things that they don't really want to own up to. So I'm sure that this is all above board and everything's absolutely fine and it's something that we should look forward to, seeing as they're building on every bit of scrap of farmland that we can possibly have and indeed they're trying to get rid of animals whatsoever and, and make us eat bugs. But that aside, 
that aside, let's let's have a, a little examination of this. I feel like I'm turning a little bit here today, uh, like Dr. John Campbell with his wonderful uh, presentations, where he 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 shows something and then he has an amazing quip. Um, uh, do check him out. He's he's, uh, he's very good on the on the medicine side. I have no scientific knowledge whatsoever, so you can take whatever I say as a pinch of salt. It doesn't really matter. All I'm doing is. I'm just reacting to what I see. So here we go. Something that's got Charles III's name. Bear in mind that Charles III has got a public oath coming up in the coronation. Does anybody know what the oath uh, exists, consists of? Does anybody actually know what that will be? What he's going to say uh, in his oath? Is he actually going to um, safeguard the traditions and customs of this? Is he going to retract um, other interests such as the WEF and the World Health organization is he going to retract all of that it would be quite useful wouldn't it because we'd hate to have a king that perhaps was uh, on the one hand well sort of split responsibilities is either for us and what we want as sovereign people and and and, and not what perhaps a, an outside organization that really and truly got nothing whatsoever to do with the sovereign people of this land but anyway it's i just noticed that was quite interesting that it's got charles the third written all over it so this is obviously he's very much into this a bit of genetic technology so uh, this is chapter six i don't know what happened to the first five chapters but uh, anyway here we go and as you can see on here look at this it's uh, it was passed only the other day 23rd of march 2023 an act to make provision about the release and marketing of and risk assessment relating to precision bred plants and animals and the marketing of food and feed produced from such plants and animals and for connected purposes uh, be it enacted by the king's most excellent majesty by and with the advice and consent of the Lord spiritual and temporal and commons in this pres present parliament assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. So there we go. I mean, you know, it's almost an oath in itself, isn't it? Um, right. Let's just have another little look there. Then precision uh, breeding definitions. Let's just find out. That. I'm not going to spend forever on this because I will leave the link and you can go and have a look at it. And if you are, you know, in any way slightly nervous about this uh, or a little bit uh, uh, worried that this thing has happened, we do have um, we do have representation, don't we? The way the system works, this weird system of acts and statutes that sits on common law. Uh, you, we have to remember, of course, that common law, natural law, God's law, whatever you want to call it, is is the bedrock of our of our community, of of our society. It's 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 what life is. It's common law. Do no harm. And then sitting on that in its own bubble is, of course, the the the, the thing that we've asked people to do, and that is your parliament that create the acts and the set, uh, and the statutes. So they sit on top of common law. So common law is there. That is the bedrock, and you can't interfere with that. And then you've got this sort of bubble of acts and statutes, of which this is part of, which actually, if you had a big enough pin... Uh, and if all of us said, you know, we don't want any of this, we don't want the acts or the statutes, we could actually, as sovereign people, because we are in common law, we could pin and burst the bubble. We just need everybody to be aware of that, that that is actually a thing and that we could just throw all of this away if we don't want it. We just have to say, no, we don't want it. As simple as that. We just don't have to. You know, we don't give our consent. But anyway, if you enter the bubble, if you accept, if you sort of contract with acts and settlements and acquiesce to it, then this is the kind of thing that they can throw at you. So here it is, uh, precision bred organism. In this act, precision bred organism means a precision bred plant or a precision bred animal. Great. And for the purposes of this act, an organism is precision bred if... Any feature of its genome results from the application of modern biotechnology. Right. Every feature of its genome that results from the application of modern biotechnology is stable. It's got to be stable, you know, safe and effective. 
is another way of putting it, I suppose. Um, every feature has got to be stable. Yeah, every feature of this genome that results from the application of modern biotechnology could have resulted from traditional po processes, whether or not in conjunction with selected techniques alone. And in the last part, its genome does not contain any feature that results from the application of any artificial artificial modification technique other than modern biotechnology. I, I now, it would be nice to see what the definition of biotechnology is. Um, because we've seen, you know, things like in the past, we've, we've heard of bioweapons, for example, and we've had uh, disastrous results where uh, biometrics have been involved. I mean, you only have to look at places like China to see where they've gone overboard with their biometrics and, you know, they're trying to control the state with all this sort of technology and, and bio this and bio that. I mean, I have enough trouble with um, biological washing powder or non-bio, which is what I usually uh, prefer. But let's have a quick gander a little bit further into this and, and see where we go. And, and as you can see, it's, oh, it, oh, golly, you know, this is quite complex. And um, it's the meaning of a plant. Let's have a look at that. A plant means an organism in the taxonomic group. And then it's got some words here which are even for me are difficult to, um, because I've never come across them before. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. Somebody will be much far cleverer than me. Uh, the archaplastidia. I think, and ferroferrisae, is it? Something like that. So that's really helped, doesn't it? We, we're very clear on that now. In this act, animal means an organism in the taxonomic group, uh, metatosa, other than a human or a human, a admixed embryo. I'm very pleased that uh, it's not humans that are being classed as a plant or an animal it's very kind that they're not talking about humans are they talking about living men and living women as well are they classed in it or are they, well they don't they're not in acts and statutes you see so you know if you're a living man if you're a sentient being you, you, you probably don't have to worry about any of this rubbish this is really just for those legal persons you know so we'll see where we go uh, and let's just do a little bit more and then I'm going to close this because I, I don't know what I'm talking about um, and it's not fair of me to criticise it. And I, I'm not criticising it. I'm just saying, look, it's a, here's a thing. Should we be worried about it? That's really all I'm saying because I don't remember being asked like so many, so many times, you know. Um, it, an act, we've said animal, and then it goes on about an embryo and the stages that a plant and blah, 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 and, and an egg and things like that. OK, um, what I was interested in, hang on, I'm going to come back up here because in, in this bit here, uh, the, the, for me, it, it'll go into how you do it and all of that nonsense. But um, where is it? Hang on, I just got to scroll down. There's a lot of scrolling. There's a bit down here. Um, where it talks about the marketing, marketing, relevant animals, blah, 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 uh, part three, the enforcement is, is, is what, here we go, enforcement. That's what I was quite interested in. You know, if you didn't want to eat this stuff or you didn't want to have it or um, you're, you're a, a person who breeds it, what, what do they say? So regulations may, it says may make provision for, so it's only may make provision, an inspector to an issue either the following, a compliance notice, oh, a stop notice. So, you know, if you're going to be one of these people who are going to go down this road, these are the things that could happen. The Secretary of State or an inspector to issue a monetary penalty Penalty notice. Oh, yes, they do like their penalty notices in this country at the moment. Um, not that we've got a lot of money left, I don't think. I mean, we don't even know if the banks are going to be there tomorrow morning when we wake up. What with the way everything's going a bit rocky at the moment, do we? Uh, regulations may provide for a requirement imposed by a stop notice to be enforceable. Well, um, I wonder if we could just have a stop notice right from the beginning and just ask people if that's what they want their farming to go down. Maybe, you know, because ultimately, will we get a choice to eat this genetically modified food in plants and animals? Will we get a choice or will it just sort of like those bugs just end up in the food chain um, or should we just think actually we would like to, a little bit of a debate with the people? Why is it that we have to have stuff being going through a royal ascent without us having anything to do with it? 
seeing as we're the ones likely to do with it. The chances are the people who've got all the money and the elites and the globalists and all of that, they, they, they're probably going to eat from a different different farm. I wonder if, if the king and his, um, you know, he, he has a farm, doesn't he, somewhere? And he, you know, he has the, um, I, I think I once bought some of his biscuits. They, they weren't really any better than the biscuits I got from the supermarket, to be honest with you. But um, he, has a, he has a brand of food. I wonder if his stuff will be the same stuff. Will it be the same uh, genetically modified animals? I don't know. I don't know. I just thought I'd put this out. Um, just to show you that, you know, actually things go on, don't they? The uh, the benevolent and very friendly, kind government. I'm just scrolling. Oh, it's going to take me forever to scroll back to the. Where's the little thing? There it is. To scroll back to the thing, just to show you that one once more. There it is. Look at that. There we go. The Genetic Technology Precision Breeding Act 2023. I wonder how quickly it will be before that's in the food chain. And uh, and what it will look like, and 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 you know, like we we recently had a we had a bit of a, a a new a new medical intervention, didn't we? Fairly recently, and 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 in fact, it was at the experimental stage. Yet um, I believe it still is experimental, and yet people are still, you know, willingly having um, having a, an experimental thing shoved into them, and for some people that hasn't been very good, but. Um, I'm sure this uh, genetic technology will will must go through a period of um, a phase of being completely and utterly tested, and everybody know exactly, you know, with a big red sticker on it saying this is the genetic modification aisle where all, you know, which will probably be all ten aisles, and then there'll be perhaps some miserable looking furniture that you know, not furniture, animals that says that it's. Um, perhaps you know organic you know they'll just be sort of weepy little things i don't know i don't know tell me what you think be interested to know what you think um are you up for a bit of this i mean it could be the answer seeing as they're going to get rid of uh, you know the ukraine as the, as the bread basket of the world we, we won't have any of that and uh, the dutch farmers are fighting for the survival so they, they seem to want to close that down and have a tripart city or whatever it's called so maybe that's all we're going to have you know just to keep us going um, I, I don't know why they don't just give us smarties. They've got the answer, haven't they? Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been very lovely talking to you, and I will catch up with you soon.